Hello, I'm Rebecca Flaherty and today I'm sharing a free taster lesson from one of my Skillshare classes. If you want to find out more about this class then just follow the links in the description or go to rebeccaflaherty.com forward slash learn. So now we're going to put everything together and use it to create a texture overlay layer for this illustration that I have here. It's made up of this white background color fill layer. I've got my illustration all grouped together here. And then on top, you can't see it. I've got a white map. If I change the background color here to something a bit darker, you can see I've got this white matte layer on top so that we can see the contrast between the white and the texture of the paper. So let's just undo that and change that back to white. I'm gonna put the texture layers on top of this group but underneath the white mat. Unless you were actually building a white mat into your illustration, you wouldn't have that layer. So just go ahead and put these layers on top of your document. So I'm gonna create three new layers here on top of my illustration. So we're putting these above the grouped illustration layers. And then we're gonna go up to patterns and find the folder that has our seamless canvas textures in it that we created earlier. So the first layer that I'm gonna do will be the color burn layer, which is gonna apply the canvas texture onto the parts of our illustration. So I'm gonna find the darker version up here and click on that and it will apply it to our layer and then we can see the white mat around the edge now. And then up here where it says normal, these are our blend modes. So we're gonna select color burn. And then if we zoom in, you can see it's added the really cool canvas effect to just the motifs in our illustration. And if you remember how color burn works, it takes the light and dark information from this layer and uses it to increase or decrease the contrast on our illustration layer. So we get the same variance in tone. And I remember using color burn on white gives no change, which is why we've still got the white background. Now, as you can see, this is looking pretty wild and it's a bit too noticeable. So I'm gonna go up here to the opacity. I don't ever leave this at 100%. Let's try changing it down to 50 and see how that looks. And there we go, that's looking much better. I might even change it down a bit lower. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and the down arrow so I can adjust this in increments of 10. And I think, think I'm gonna leave that at 40 because when we come to put the multiplier layer again, that's gonna add a further depth to this. So it's probably better to leave it slightly underdone than to have it overdone at this stage. So I'm gonna select the layer underneath now, and this is where we're gonna add our paper texture in. This has only added the texture to the illustration at this point. So we're gonna add a multiply layer in to add it to the paper, because remember color burn on white doesn't have any effect. So we're gonna click on our lighter thumbnail up here in our seamless canvas textures folder. And then we're gonna to go to our blend mode and change this one to multiply. And then I'm gonna zoom out a bit so you can see this compared to the white around the outside. That's obviously far too gray and not really papery looking. So as before, we're gonna go up to our opacity and let's start by changing this to 50% and see how that's looking. I think that's probably still a bit too dark and too gray. So I'm gonna take this all the way down to 10 and you can see that's not quite strong enough. It's nice to have a bit more contrast between the canvas and the or any white mat that you would have. So let's try taking up to 20. And I think, I think 20 is probably good for this one. The exact numbers that you will use will depend on how light or how dark your canvas textures are for both the color burn layer and this multiply layer. So 20% works okay for mine with the levels and the settings that I have, but it may not be the right amount for yours. So do have a play and try and get some kind of contrast that's looking sort of like this, but most importantly, how you would like it to look. So I'm gonna leave this one at 20, and then let's go to our layer underneath this one. And this one is gonna be our paint texture layer. So let's go to our canvas textures folder, click on this pattern thumbnail here. And the blend mode for this one will also be color burn, so if I turn this layer on and off, and let's focus on this part here. 
So if we zoom in, you can see some of these paint bleeds are being transferred onto this layer, but they're not that noticeable. And the problem is, if I just put this blend mode back to normal, the scale of this is just too big for the illustration. So I'm gonna double click on this thumbnail here and we can change the scale of this pattern layer to 50% to start with and then press enter. And then we'll change our blend mode back to color burn. And then if we zoom in and toggle this on and off again, you can see the small parts of the paint bleeds are now much more visible and prominent within the illustration itself. If we just turn these on and off, you can see another thing it does is increase the saturation and vibrance of the colors. And that's the thing I keep in mind while I'm illustrating. I create template documents that are blank, but with these layers on them so that I can work underneath these layers in Procreate and choose my color palettes with these layers already applied to them. To do that, you would just need to create a blank document with these pattern layers on them, save it as a PSD, and then send it over to your iPad. There you can open it in Procreate and do your illustrations on the layers below the pattern fill layers. So to go back to our illustration here, I don't use this paint texture layer at the full 100% opacity either. So I'm gonna, let's take it down to 70%. It is one I normally have higher rather than lower. So have a play around with the opacity of this layer and see what depth of effect you like. You can also change the scale of the canvas effect on these two layers. But one really important rule is that if you change the scale on one, you must change the scale on the other to the same. If you remember, these are made from identical texture files. So the light and the dark parts stack up perfectly on top of each other and they work together to give this canvas effect. So these two layers must have the same scale and you mustn't move or drag them around. They need to be perfectly lined up on top of each other. So if we double click on this layer and we change the scale to 50% and then we zoom in, you can see they don't match up and they don't work together properly anymore. So we need to double click on this one and change the scale to 50%. And now you can see the two scales match up properly. Don't forget to zoom out every now and then when you're changing these levels and opacities and blend modes, just to make sure that you're happy with the overall look of everything. I've just grouped these texture layers to keep them tidy and to be able to toggle them on and off more easily. If we turn this on and off, you can see the before and after effect there. This is the thing that never gets old for me. I love turning the, the effects on and off and seeing what a difference it makes, especially in this part here, I can see the nice paint textures coming through there. So that is how to apply these layers and set them up over a print. But what if you wanted to export this design as a transparent PNG for a t-shirt? Let's just turn these top two layers off and pretend that they're not on there for a second. The way that you would make this a transparent file for a t-shirt is to turn off this background color fill layer, and then you could export it as a PNG with no background. If we turn this color fill layer on and put our texture layer on, you can see now if we turn this color fill layer off, because they are not blending onto white anymore, we get this really messy background showing through instead of our nice clear background. So I'm gonna put this white background back in for a second. The way we get around this is I've grouped all my illustration together in one layer here. So I'm gonna press Command J to duplicate that layer. And then I'm gonna right click on it and scroll down to merge group. So now I have this flattened copy of the illustration. I'm gonna command click on the thumbnail here and that will select all of the pixels in that illustration layer. I'm done with that copy now so I can turn that off and I can use this selection to make a layer mask for the group that has all our texture layers in it. So now if we zoom out, you can see that this is only applied to the illustration and not to the background as it was before. And we can now turn off this color fill layer and as you can see, we've got a nice transparent background there. So this could now be exported as a PNG file for putting on a t-shirt or tote bag. If you want to turn this effect on and off and get the effect back again over the whole document, you can right click on this layer mask here and then click on disable layer mask. 
and that will turn the effect off. So you can toggle on and off by right clicking and choosing enable and disable. I always leave this mask set up, but leave it disabled if I'm sending a file to a client. If they've requested a layered PSD, then I will leave this layered mask in there set up so that if they want to change the background or export something as a PNG, I don't have to explain to them all the steps about setting up that layer mask. I can just say to them, oh, that thing there, you just right click on it and choose enable or disable. So yeah, definitely set this up and then leave it on there because it will save you time further down the line, I promise. So for your class project, your assignment is to export a before and after picture of these two illustrations. So one with and one without the mask. One way to do that is to turn the mask off, export that, turn it back on, export that. Or you can set up another layer mask to show it half on and half off. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command J and hide the layer below. And I'm just going to delete that layer mask. And then we go up here to our rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to mark off roughly half of the illustration. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can click on your duplicated texture layer and apply that layer mask. And then we can see half with and half without. So then you would go up to file, export and save for web. This will bring up this box and you can choose the image size that you want to export. I would suggest changing the width to something certainly no more than a thousand pixels because you don't need to be uploading full resolution pictures to the project gallery. So then you can click on save and then that will save a really small JPEG copy of that file, perfect for uploading. So now that we know how to set these up on an illustration or a print, in the next video, we'll look at how to use these textures we've created in a seamless pattern tile. I'm kind of obsessed with texture. I love working digitally and I make most of my art within Procreate. And although there are a million gorgeous texture brushes out there, I also like to use these canvas texture overlays in my patterns and illustrations. By creating your own from scratch, you're able to add unique textures and paint effects to your digital work that help your design stand out from the crowd. I'm Becky Flaherty. I'm a UK illustrator and my speciality is surface pattern design. I've been working as a full-time artist running my own online business since 2015 and in that time I've been constantly refining my processes to come up with my own methods and shortcuts for creating patterns and illustrations. I sell my artwork through print-on-demand platforms such as Society6, Threadless and Spoonflower, as well as doing freelance work and licensing my designs to a range of small and large companies. I get asked a lot how I create watercolour textures in my digital designs, so I'm back for my fifth Skillshare class to teach you how to create your own canvas and paint textures from scratch and then turn them into seamless layers to use in your patterns and illustrations. Creating your own textures to use is much better than buying ready-made assets for lots of reasons. First up, it'll save you money as you don't have to buy them in the first place. And because you own them, there's no limit to the amount of designs or end products for sale that you can use them in, which sometimes applies to digital assets. And secondly, by creating your own textures and paint effects, they will be totally unique to you, so your work will have its own personality and signature look. The class is broken down into two parts, so if you don't have access to paints or a scanner, you can skip the optional watercolour texture steps and just create the canvas textures on their own. You'll learn how to apply the effects to a standalone print or illustration, as well as how to use the textures seamlessly with any size of pattern tile. We'll look at how to turn parts of the effects on and off, so you can still export your designs as transparent files for things like t-shirts and tote bags, and I'll even be showing you how I set my file up ready for sending out to clients so they can easily toggle the effects themselves. This is an intermediate level class for people who are already familiar with the basics of Photoshop and are ready to learn some new skills and techniques. By the end of this class, you'll be able to get started photographing and painting your own watercolour canvas textures to use in your surface patterns and illustrations. I can't wait to see what you come up with and I will see you in class.